This week on the Push for Lows podcast, it was Pancake Day. What did you have? We talk about our choices, decent protein review, and some Instagram analytics. What should you be posting? All right, let's go in three, two, one. It's Pancake Day. Then it's Wednesday, Thursday. Not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> you refuse to say it. You refuse hey guys, to say welcome it. to the Push Four Legs <laughs> podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom Hall. It's going about. I had pancakes, but the real question is not should it be fluffy or crepe style, because it's always fluffy. Like, crepe style pancakes are shit. Like, let's not even go there. I mean, no, 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 I mean, go back to your childhood. Which ones did you have? Crepe pancake. That's why I hated Pancake Day. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I hated Pancake Day. Crepes. I never used to like it. Th- and now yeah. I like it. Why, why do I like it now? Because I have fluffy pancakes with maple syrup <laughs> and bacon. That's why. So you okay? get a sweet and savoury. Yeah, always. Combine them. Always. Combine Although them. Although today, today I had Nutella because we didn't have any maple syrup or bacon. So I had Nutella. Just sweet. Nutella with bacon. No, although, but that's good, but no. <laughs> I still think Biscoff and bacon is the one. That's the one. I, I haven't tried it yet, but I think that I've, would be I've, the one. I've got that ready to go. So pre-show, I had three crepes because I normally have the fluffy pancakes anyway because uh, those are the ones that are sold normally. And uh, Dan, basically living in Squalor, doesn't live near a place. I mean, what's just about five minutes walk around the corner from me, Daniel? Oh, the Breakfast Club. Interesting. Oh, so the, <laughs> the Breakfast Club, I can order on delivery. It's going to be in here under 20, 25 minutes. So, yeah, oh, I, 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 I don't get crepes very often. I do I miss go for the <laughs> living in London. <laughs> Any takeaway that I'm getting, I'm like, Dan, look what I got. The stupidly high rents are worth it. The more I think about it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I think, oh, I want that now. Mm. It's all right. It's just, just be pleased that your mortgage would, yeah. You could, you could have my flat and, yeah, not, right. you could probably have a few rooms. You have half yeah. a flat. It'd be probably the same probably as probably have one. half your flat. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm paying on there. So that's, yeah, that's the sad, sad thing. That's why we're in London. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pancake day. So I actually put a poll out, didn't I? Um, just because it was just, uh, it was interesting. So it was, what we got? We've got some, we've got some, it's pretty divisive. Well, how many, how many votes did we have? Near enough a hundred, hundred odd, I think, um, on everything. Yeah. That's about right. So what we got is 60%. 60% pancake fluffy. That's what people are favoring. Yeah. Compared to. I'm surprised it's that, I'm surprised oh, it's it's just, that low to go. It's, ju- it's just changed 59%. Um, I didn't just vote, just FYI. Um, <laughs> for you have a go. And then I put another one up was um, savory or sweet as the favorite. And uh, I'm surprised by this of how much of a swing it is. And, uh, sweet. Obviously. For sweet, ninety percent mm. out of a, yeah, just over a, just over a hundred people voting on the story. It's going to be up for the next twelve hours, but yeah, it's insane. Uh, I, I'd expect that to be fair, but I've seen some I've seen some her- truly horrific concoctions this pancake day. Apparently, it's a really northern thing that you have like a pancake with like stew on it. Like we were having this discussion oh. in the Bikers and Banner <laughs> WhatsApp group, right? Apparently it's a real northern thing. So like Joe put out a thing and she was asking about pancakes. People saying, Yeah, they're having it with their with like meat and potatoes on. I was just like, What the fuck? Hold on a second. Yeah, I saw I saw her story about gravy on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and it's basically like a flat Yorkshire pudding, effectively. Like, that's what it's Yorkshire pudding is, right? It's that kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Basically you have a flat pancake with stew on it. I was like I don't get. I, I get it. Like, just have a toad in a hole, though. Why would you? Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know. So I get. I get it. I think it would work. Like, I don't. I've just never seen it or heard of it. Ever. I just. I just think. I think the pancake. Like, are they? They're. They're obviously crepes, right? Then. No. The, the one I saw was a fluffy one. The one <laughs> the that I saw was like cakes. a big, a big fluffy one. Let me try and find a picture for you. So the only the only one. thing I can kind of liken to this is biscuits and gravy. And that's amazing. Yeah, but no, but, because but that is really good. That. But then, 
it's because not biscuits that, and gravy is a southern thing and like biscuits are like this like they're go. almost like a really they're the most filling things in the world of like a scone Look. scone kind of texture let's see this is on the it's youtube kinda, thing if you're watching this yeah it's kind of like yeah, what a, is that that's just it's not like, a crepe because no. a crepe would just would just would just buckle under the pressure of that juice and the moist nature of it that's just a stew on a fluffy pancake and then he's gone round two, which they do look more like crepes, to be fair. Yeah, they do look like crepes. It's I'm a thick crepe, that. to be fair. But he, He's put some chocolate button things on him, on yeah. the, the second one. That's so strange. Known. So I've cooked myself five. I've got two to go back to um, after this show, because uh, why not? Um, barely eating all day. Yourself. All right, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I went with bacon and some cheese on two of them. Bit of a uh, num num num, and then I, I had literally just Biscoff spread and like rolled up the crepe and had that one. You can't go wrong with so, that. To be fair, I can't go wrong with that. Well, that's not the crepe I, though. That's not that's not the crepe. That's just just the Biscoff spread just, that makes just that win. I, I could have rolled up just like a, I don't know a sandwich. It would have been fine. Mate, you could have rolled up um, a cigarette paper and put in Biscoff <laughs> and eat it. Do you know what I mean? Like um, it's fine. Well, what I what I should have done is grabbed some of Chloe's digestives and sprinkled like a bit of crispiness in there. Because obviously the crunchy yeah. Biscoff is better, and I've got the smooth one. And yeah, uh, yeah I need some some crispiness in there. So it's I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that when I get when I get back when I when I leave this show. Um, also, blasphemy! I I got the mini Biscoff sticks. Biggest oh, really? of the year. They're not good, are they? They're, no, you need Awful. the big one. I was like yeah. the big ones and I was like, cause the big ones come and they got covered in Biscoff then the chocolate and the crispiness. And I was like, perfect. If they're yeah. mini versions of that, excellent. Cause they're like 350 calories for one. I was oh, like no, half that easy. Yeah. They're almost more, aren't they? They're near 400 it's calories. Just, it's <laughs> the Biscoff mini is just vanilla ice cream with a, a coating of chocolate. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. It's, with a couple it, of crispy bits on the outside. Oh, I'm yeah. so, so devastated when I got that. I was like, wow, let me down. First time ever yeah. Biscoff let me down. <laughs> That's I feel fine. like they can't get the uh, the biscoffy creamy stuff like in there because there's biscoff like sauce in there. There's biscoff I don't sauce see why. as far as I know. So I think that's the stuff they put in, and you can yeah. have that as a topping. So yeah, um, annoying. It's just annoying. <laughs> pretty just much. Annoyed so. me. Yeah. I'm just surprised. Surprised. And one last poll. I, did you vote on this? No, you did. No, you didn't. On um, my friend, he wears jeans inside the house. I did. I did vote on that. Awful decision. Who the fuck would what do that? What a terrible decision. Yeah, I mean, like we're about and again ninety ten. People as feel strongly about this as they do with sweet and savoury crepes. Or it's like it's like me um, with this hoodie. Like I wear this. I've worn this hoodie like all week, and people are like, yeah. "Oh, you're not changing hoodie." It's like, well, how sweaty am I getting inside <laughs> my house with a t shirt <laughs> underneath it for a start? I was like, I don't, my, I'm not seeing it. My question is like, who are you trying to impress? I don't understand. Yeah, I'm like, like, I don't get it either. My um, my brother in law used to do that. So he he used to wear jeans all the time. And my sister was just like, he's weird. He used to wear his jeans all the time in the house. <laughs> and we managed to convert him. And now joggers all the way. He's fine with yeah. it. Joggers all the way. It's just like, no, you're, not, you're not trying to impress anybody. Like, you're not in the first, it's he's like, not in the first six months of his relationship. Like, he's yeah, not got a tread like that. It's just nah. like, settle down. Either it's like those blokes that... Um, or get some joggers, yeah. It's like those blokes that... Um, they put the loafers on with the jeans and then a check shirt and to go to the shops to get milk. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you see them pot around their garden, they're dressed up and you're like, mate, what yeah. are you doing? Cleaning the driveway, dressed up. Boat shoes on. Yeah, yeah I don't get it. Else. Like, Be normal, mate. Just wear tracky bottoms. Don't yeah, understand that. Absolutely fine. They're comfy. Like, they look all right. It's fine. I just, I just don't understand. Like, what do you do when you come in from somewhere? Put your jeans on? No. Yeah, I know. No, you like, don't. You put joggers on or shorts. Like, like, I walk through the door and it's it it could take me less than five strides to be like losing basically what I'm. Oh, the belt's wearing. off. You could, yeah, oh, you're yeah. Stuck. yeah, exactly. Belts, yeah. If I was wearing a belt, that's off. That's and then I'm I'm in pants within five strides and then I'm like, cool, done. Yeah, I, I don't 100%. need to be. That's not me out there. This is me. <laughs> I didn't even think that was a question. I didn't even think that people didn't do that. I just thought that was people everyone. Do it. I mean, Everyone. bear in mind, roughly, roughly the same. About a hundred people voted on this. Seven, seven people have gone for it's comfy. <laughs> They're the weirdos. Do any of them? I mean, I'll just call them out. If anybody, any of these, listen to the podcast. I think two of them 
might be your clients. I'm not too sure, but they're definitely associated oh, wow. with you. Um, one of them is uh, Bloom in Health or in. Oh, Bloom. Neve can shut up. She does not know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah. Sarah Williams. I think she was or was your client. She was my client. She's another idiot. So don't worry She's, about she, it. She'll never be your client anymore. James, <laughs> maybe. James, maybe. Well, that says everything you need to know. Um, that says everything you need to know about that. And so, then, yeah, we've got a guy called Luke. Um, Scott, who's actually a, a trainer that it is at my gym. Dear me, Scott. Idiot. And uh, and Paul, um, he won't listen to that. He's uh, our gay graphic designer. He just has to dress up no matter what. So um, yeah, okay, yeah. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's pretty classy oh. man. So I understand that. But yeah, mate, that's just insane. Oh. What a, what a, what a mental person. I'll go let him know that you disapprove. Uh, basically, yeah, please do. <laughs> Um, I wonder if though I wonder if it's people well no it's not because obviously we know some of those people but I wonder if it's the whole like if you normally wear a suit all day every day I suppose jeans are a step down do you know like I wonder if it's those people I mean he, he does normally yeah he works in sales for an investment banking or investment whereas we work in like whereas for us, <laughs> know, you know, getting, like, for us getting in I jeans just... is dressing up there'll be like I mean? getting oh, in jeans is when, to us. when I'm going to the office like yeah I'm just going to the office with Luke so uh, if, if Luke's wearing trousers, like any kind of them, I'm, I'm impressed. Like <laughs> he, he walks in and he, and he has to switch in the office, switch from his sh- like trainers, what he had on to sliders because they're too <laughs> uncomfortable. He's like trainers off, sliders on. There we go. I'm now relaxed. <laughs> Could you imagine if Luke was like, yeah, you've got to wear jeans or something every day? I'd be like, I am, um, yeah, I'll go in in the hoodie, trackies, yeah. see you later. Cheap um, boots, don't matter. Mm. Insane. All right, mate. Um, I guess we have to go on to Putin Review. Yeah, that's the lead on. Oh, mate. Jesus. I've just had Asian like those pancakes one, as well. So I'm, I'm kind of already a little bit like, I just had the Biscoff, so I'm a little bit full. Of the, previously, what we've yeah. done is I had my dinner after the show and I was a little bit, ooh, wanting it. Not really. I'm not in the best mood for this, but they'll, I'm sure they'll break through. So I'm holding to the screen. Right, double. I'm going to go first. Double chocolate chunk. Double. Yeah, I was looking forward to this. Um, this is the last batch of protein pantries that I have. Damn, when I bought some more. Um, so we're going to have to wait till wait wait till the bakery's up and running again. We still got like what we got like four or five. Of other ones, so I, I'll talk. I'll talk through this whilst Dan has a little, uh, little thing. So we got energy, two hundred seventy-six calories. That's pretty standard, I believe. Most of them are around two sixty, aren't they? Um, yeah. So we got ten grams of fat, nineteen grams of carbohydrates, and twenty-one grams of fiber, and seventeen grams of protein in the double chocolate chunk. That's lower, three grams lower the normal okay um also i'm slightly confused because i'm i'll come back to that um because what's the weight on this daniel this says 100 grams okay that's weird isn't it this one is 100 grams and this one is 95 sure change me on that one what is going on there just realized that the uh the macro is slightly different <laughs> What we got verdict wise, Daniel? I'm, I'm still scissors. chewing. I'm still chewing. Still chewing. What I'm going to say is, bite in far enough that you get the white chocolate chunk. <laughs> okay, there's a sneak, a sneaky white chocolate chunk hiding, is there? Yep. Lovely. Look at that. Look at the size of it. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? You can't spot it from the outside either, right? No. I'm going to go in. I, I need to break it in half. I'm, I'm going to go in from the side then. Or yeah, I think you need to break it in half, half or go in from the side. One of the two. To get the, it's the hard, it's, true nature it's, of that bar. It's quite hard to break in half because obviously there's a massive chunk in the middle that's probably holding it I think go from the side then. Go big bite in from the side. I've, just, I've already done it, mate. I've already I've just broken it. Oh, you've already. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's go a pretty side, impressive right? chunk for a protein bar. Okay. That is... Um, um, so yeah, the, the double chocolate chunk is um, similar in texture to the honeycomb one in that it's a bit chewier. But that big chunk is very, very impressive. So in review, it's still better than any other protein bar. But remember, this is a protein pantry protein bar, so we have to judge it by their standards. So the rating scale is on their standards. By their standards, for me, that is about a seven. 
the hazelnut and those those are the ones we'll talk about a bit. I know what the hazelnut one tastes like because I bought my own. So Tom can't get mad at me for that because I bought my own and had it. Very, very nice. Um, but the the caramels and cr- the crunchier ones for me are the better ones out of those. Like they're they're the, they're the top tier ones. That one is still obviously, like I said, better than carb killer, better than all the other protein bars. But um, it's just got that chewy texture and you can tell it's a protein bar. Whereas others, I, I didn't think you could really tell they were. Yeah, I like still, that. Um, still very, very good. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. But I it's do like them. it. That like massive chunk of basically white chocolate in the middle is quite just overpowering, I guess. Um, and I would like that you could have that protein bar, but you could choose the chunk of chocolate that was in it. I just so also think as well, could just I have to a, be really... Could I have a dark chocolate chunk or a milk chocolate yeah. chunk or a white chocolate chunk? Mm. Would that would that change it? Or maybe you have three little chunks of different chocolates. On I hear you. The only, the, only re- the only thing as well about that is it's 17 grams of protein, whereas you've got like yeah. the hazelnut cream is 26. Do you yeah, know? Like, that's big, that's a, right? So that's, that's the only other thing about on, it. On the macros, that's down. Like that's, that's the, the only wor- other thing about it. I think that that's the worst macros that we've seen out of these. Mm. Oh, apart from obviously that fucking cookie thing that was just the worst macros in the world. Twenty grams yeah. for six thousand calories. Um, yeah, that's when eating broccoli per grammage of protein is actually more beneficial. Um, yeah. All right. With the, have, you, have you just taken a bite out of the hazelnut cream? No, you don't. What you, what? No, I went back in for the just, for just, the chunk. Just eating. He's just eating now. He, just <laughs> he, eating doesn't, now. he doesn't care. We live on a show, and Daniel is just. I went for down. the chunk. Right, I saw the so chunk. The, it was too much. The chunk. Yeah, was there. I know. I, to be fair, I've got no chunk left. I just took it all in that bite. Um, so I think the rest of the bar is not going to be as good now. The chunk is not there. Um, all right. So the hazelnut cream. This one, I think, I feel like this one apparently from reviews has been insane. Because um, yeah, I think I think well, I've already ha- I've already Chris, tried this, so I think you should go first. You should do this one first. So I'm just thinking, you do the macros then. I'll have a little, but I'm I'm right. I'm liking that it's got a crispy bit on it. So the macros on the hazelnut cream are 26.8 grams of protein, so we can call that 27. 12 grams of carbs, 10 grams mm. of fat, and 12 grams of fiber. Um, 274 calories overall. 274 calories for 27 grams of protein is not that bad, I have to say. Um, considering like say most protein bars maybe a grenade bar 220 is about 20 grams of protein 200 so it's roughly the same sort of ratio but um i have had a hazelnut cream and i can confirm it is next level um it's just it's kinder bueno like if you were to like describe it to someone it's it's a kinder bueno protein bar and if that doesn't make you go and buy one right now if they're back in stock ever then i don't know what will to be honest well, that was quite interesting. So I bit into it. It did fall apart a bit. I'm not going to lie. It did take a big bite. It fell apart a bit. And you got the crispiness. Obviously, the crispy bit. And some of the chocolate fell off at the bottom. So I've just got crispies on the bottom now. There's all the oh, chocolate okay, on the yeah. bottom. So this is where the chocolate is. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's a bit, it's a bit disappointing on that, that it didn't like seal a little bit better. But the crispy, good. We need the different textures. That's good. Yeah. Um, it's obviously what they tried to do with the chocolate chunk on the last one and then but you got the crispy and i was like oh it's good it's like a crispy cake kind of thing and then i got the kick of the hazelnut hazelnut cream bit at the top that kind of felt its way through into my taste buds and then you exactly when you said it's like a kinder bueno it was like zoom and that's when it picked up and i was like shit it's like a ferrero rocher kinder bueno kind of chocolate bar um so yeah like that like that a lot Again, obviously, it's a bit more chewy than an actual Kinder Bueno. But a Kinder Bueno doesn't have 27 grams of protein in it. That's probably. I actually like that about it, though. I like this about it. So I don't think that's a bad thing. It's got a little bit of chew to it. If you go into it thinking it's a bad thing, it probably is. But yeah. Um, Yeah, it's nice. I don't think that that can be beaten ever. I'm just saying that. I I don't think that can be beaten ever. You think that one's better than the Caramazon? You do. Mm-hmm. I think I do. they're tied for me, and I'm not. A, I'm, I don't really like raisins. I feel like the caramel the crunch was bigger. I think I'm yeah. a texture person. Ah, uh, for me, you see, that's that's just that's just I'm quite perfection. quite big on the protein bar. <laughs> so we're going. Yeah, I'm gonna go for. I mean, out of the out of ten, 
We give them that a 10. And yeah, um, yeah. <coughs> on the hazelnut creams, a 10 out of 10. The, uh, white, the white chocolate chunk thing, seven? Seven and a half. I give it seven. Seven. seven, seven point five. I'm going to give it because there's there's still protein bars that will probably rate as high as it, and it's just a bit average. So the current amazing quotes. What's... I've got one here. It's twenty two grams of protein. Yeah, it's a little bit low, isn't it? Mm. Mm. All that fruit that though, man. Into it hugely. It's got all that fruit in it. I did get a banoffee pie one as well, <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of it. But I won't review that live now because um, I'm going to have to find a way to get Tom one now, so he's going to cry about it. All right. Well done. So that was the end of that review. Lovely. Um, this way, right? If anyone, if anyone's birthday's coming up or something and they got family, they're like, oh, I don't know what you want. What do you want to get? Whatever. Five hazelnut cream protein bars from there. You, you will not be disappointed. No, it's well, a good deal. Good deal. I know what I'm basically getting for the rest of the time from Dan. Any, any kind of given opportunity. <laughs> Whenever they're in stock. The only ones they have in stock at the moment are the Jeffa Cake ones. It's the only annoying one? thing is people are asking me as well. They're like, when are they going back and start? I'm like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> no. I, I... All right. Protein Pantry, if you listen to this at some point, I know you're out there because you replied to my um, story on my uh, my post yesterday. And if you listen to it, I know they, they must watch the uh, the IG Live or the IG TV because they answered yeah. a question like that we we only said like near the end of it, like about the fridge freezer question. Because we were like, yeah. should they be in the freezer or the fridge? Because you, you said they could be frozen, right? Um, yeah. They did p- look at my OGTV. They they put something on there um, about it. But well, we yeah. need to know. We need protein pantry. We need to know Basically, when the stock levels are being replenished, so that we can tell all our followers <laughs> that want to buy. Can we or, we just, need like yeah. a, or we need like a secret shop that we can send people to, so that you know that yeah. they're from us. I've, because otherwise, I'll start just farming out my my protein code and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll start saying that those cut those carb bars that they make are the best ones ever. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but seriously, I refused in my protein code this week um, because I was just like, I'm not in it for that. <laughs> I don't care about that. Trust me, don't worry. Um, you let somebody else have those codes. Don't care. You can keep your ten percent. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah. I like my protein, but I don't. I don't tend to buy protein chicks. So, if I were to, I would buy my protein. So, but yeah, I just don't. So, I'd rather Ghost. Have... Ghost is my favourite brand. You best, go Ghost. Best tasted. Ghost uh, the, the thing is, I do, I do have a, a legal um, kind of partnership with my protein, I guess, with the PTC. So, I have to say it. Yeah. You've sold out, mate. You have. You've sold <laughs> out. <laughs> now nah, we're helping them out with some uh, some lovely personal trainers. We're almost to the end of the decision making on who are getting selected on those people. So, it'll be cool. interesting to see who who comes through. Um, if they're listening to this yeah, show, if they know who I am. Um, who not? They'll, they'll be seeing a hell of a lot of me very soon. Um, unfortunately, oh, poor, poor people. Poor, poor people. Which, on on a side note, yeah, we just um, if anybody's listening to this, you might some of the, the cohorts who just uh, who are in our eight week intensive. So whilst lockdown's happening, they've uh, decided to go for it, become a personal trainer with us at the PTC, which is lovely. Um, I think That's most of them. Um, are doing the hybrid course so they get to do the online coaching blueprint possibly intensive we're playing with that idea um, afterwards as well so that'd be pretty good that's a lot of studying though hats off that's like nearly three months you've got to endure like two months of me and then lots of videos of me and we have like weekly um, just like you Dan I heard someone uh, did say that our they're doing another course a nutrition course I won't mention it um, but it's a company that Dan used to work for um, and our uh, live session is better than this. We were like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's way more interactive because we know who we're talking to. It's fine. Um, it shows when both me and Luke have been teachers or are teachers. So, yeah, we want a bit of interaction. That's why how we learn, isn't it? So it's good fun. Really, really cool people um, who have signed up. Lots of, like, really good mix as well. So it's the first, first cohort that I'm kind of leading as head of training. So, and, yeah, taking them through. There's a range from like newbies, from like 18 year olds, all the way up to I think we've got the highest age is like 50, 55. Oh, nice. Who's just nice. who's just doing it for the shits and giggles, just wants to learn. He's an accountant and he was just like, I'm an accountant, I'm still gonna be an accountant, <laughs> but I like the gym and I just want to know more. I was like, beautiful. That's that's a nice person. I like you. I like you in the group. Also, you're an accountant and lucky you, you might get some work. Especially from all this lot, like, <laughs> yeah. 
It's a great idea. Um, so yeah, it was good fun. Good fun. Um, I'm assuming some of them might start listening at some point. I did say I had a podcast, but I was like, if you're looking for actual fitness knowledge, go back and listen to the first like hundred or so. We did a lot more on that, or maybe the guest shows. Otherwise, it's just turned into a little bit of a chat. Um, but yeah. All right, Daniel. Have, um, our, have our listens gone up or down? I'm I'm assuming they've probably gone down on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, we're kind of level ish um yeah we still we tend to hit anywhere between go seven to nine thousand listens kind of per month so i guess that extrapolate out for about two or three thousand a week uh, per show which is interesting but yeah, I think when, it's when far we get too many, it's more than I ever when, thought we would get to. <laughs> when when we get get when we get guests on, it bumps up a little bit, and we've actually started creeping up a little bit more, um, which is nice. So yeah, yeah, because I think that's when you grow is when you get guests on. That's when you start. When you grow, because people yeah. listen for that, and then they carry on listening, don't they? And we haven't had a guest on for a fucking. Ages. I mean, it's not like we haven't got. <laughs> we literally work with some great people. We should probably get them on at some point. Yeah, and it's not like we don't have a time and date that we do it. Uh, yeah, we just got lazy. <laughs> we just got lazy. Maybe we, we should turn it back it. into a fitness podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. We should probably. Well, next week we will have a guest. There you go. And put it out there. We'll do that. Wow. Jesus pressure. Christ. Fuck. I know, absolute pressure. I mean, yeah, they, they might be named Luke or Gordon, but uh, uh, they will definitely but be, on. <laughs> yeah. be on. Um, but yeah, on the side of, we were just chatting about that in terms of um, posting on social media. Basically, that's the kind of, it's not we got lazy for say, we still do it, we still turn up, it's still content, you still do content weekly, I still do content weekly, but Dan hasn't posted for a while. And then I've kind of, I don't know, I don't know whether it's just, a, I don't know, I've, I've decided to start up the youtube channel of my youtube channel put that up on there i'll be doing some more videos based on that having a bit of fun and obviously the podcast is going up there the protein review is going up there and i'm like i've got this content why am i, why am I not just pushing it on a couple of platforms as well um it's all that because i was it kind of ground to it i was like yeah i really should do the 80 20 rule like i really should like push it more on there push it more on there blah 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 doing that kind of stuff instead of when especially when i've got time and i'm looking at my computer a hell of a lot more but yeah yeah, it, it got the question got posed in um, in our mentoring group, Minor Mike's mentoring group. One of the guys in there asked about um, like non negotiables. You know, we feel feeling overwhelmed. What do you do, and all this sort of stuff. And obviously, social media becomes part of that. Um, <clears throat> I think it's it's obviously really important that as an online coach or PT or whatever, you you make sure that you get things prioritized. I've heard of many a coach fuck themselves over because they carried on producing content putting out content without looking after their clients and the advice that i gave him was that before anything else the non-negotiable is looking after your clients that's non that's number one do not worry about social media and getting content done until all your work for the day involving your clients is done otherwise like you're missing the point of it and we then talked about whether you're going to you know instagram stories you know emails grid posts all this sort of stuff and and I suppose we chatted about it before and, and I now don't have like a, a, a content calendar. I just post content when I feel like it, when I feel like it's something worth sharing. Whereas when I first started out, I was like, right, I got to post every day, got to post something every day, got to be on the ball with it. And the reason that I now focus on quality over quantity is that the reason I'm busy and don't have the time to have a piece of content every single day is because I'm servicing clients. I'm dealing with my clients. I'm dealing with blitz. I'm dealing with the mentoring group and like, they, those are people that pay me money to be good at what I do. So that's number one. And I think that as you grow, you can start to back off social media a little bit and focus more on quality rather than quantity. Like I don't want to just post every day for the sake of it. I'd rather, when I do post, it's something meaningful and it's something that I actually want to post that I feel is going to add value to people. And obviously every bit of content you put out does to a degree, but there are some that are forced. There are a bit like, oh, I've got to put a post out today. What should I write about? Oh, I don't know, protein, whatever. And you post about it or you put up a, 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 an exercise tip or something like that. And you should be doing that every single day if you don't have many clients because you have the time. Like you don't have an excuse then. It's like, well, you've got the time. But do not beat yourself up about putting out content every single day if you're currently servicing the number of clients you want to service. Yes, you don't also want to neglect it for weeks on end. But if you go three days without posting on your Instagram grid, don't fucking panic. 
don't worry about it. Don't think that you have to have stuff posted because by working with your clients, you will start to then be able to post stuff that you've conversations have with clients and that'd be a bit of content that'd be useful but you don't need to force it as much as someone who's just starting out does um and i think that's really important to remember here is that some people who've got 20 30 clients they're really happy with the numbers they're on and they're panicking because they've gone two days about posting to their instagram grid and i'm like yeah but are your clients looked after yeah and you're feeling overwhelmed yeah and you take a break yeah so take a fucking break because you've done the work you needed to do um and i just think it's really important that Again, personal trainers do the same thing. It's like, if your jam-packed timetable is full, don't worry about trying to impress people or get new leads or speak to the sales guy to get new leads. And like, just focus on them. Do a great job with them. I guarantee you, you'll get friends recommended from them in a couple of months' time anyway. So that if someone does go, you've got someone there anyway. Um, and, and as you get to that certain point, I found, I have had people reach out to ask about coaching when I've not posted for three days. So it flies in the face of the whole, like, oh, you've got to be present, you've got to be there. It's like, no, because sometimes after a while, you've done the work, you've been put in front of people's faces enough. They know they want to work with you. They're just waiting for the right time, whatever reason, or they're waiting for the right post. They're waiting for something to happen. Um, so I just thought I, we were talking about before, wasn't it? Just yeah. there's a difference between just posting shit for the sake of posting shit and posting stuff because you feel like it's something worth sharing. And for me, the kind of variable that I focus on, whether it's one of those two things, is based on how much client work I have on. Um, and I don't stress about it, basically. If I do two bits of content a week, I'm usually pretty happy with that, to be honest, because I then have two emails as well. So I, that's the other thing for me, is I have an email list that I, I would say to everyone, focus on that first before Instagram, number one. But yeah. So I have four bits, technically. But the, 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 the Instagram posts usually lead on from the email, to be fair, anyway, as well. It's usually related somehow. So, so it's interesting as well, because... Um... So me and Luke, uh, we looked a little bit. There was a something on Rival IQ. They did a uh, just just people who might find this uh, in terms of Instagram stories, like a benchmark report. It was a like competitive analysis of Instagram stories from 2020 to 2021. Obviously, that's that's how long they've been around, right? Um, and so and finding like kind of the the biting point on certain brands of how many times like they use stories. Especially this is so stories are obviously ones that you kind of they keep you kind of like I look at Dan's stories and you find you you feel like you're in with the person like you're you're catching up with their day to day life that kind of thing keeps them in so in terms of brand and stuff like that it was saying that the median was um, they do about ten times per month or once every three days in terms of a brand that was the that's the me so if you think you're not posting enough that's the that's the median successful brands on Instagram once every three days. So the top 25% publish 16 times a month. So they do a story every other day, um, basically, or a certain amount of stories. They don't post it every single day, but you you notice they come back every single time. Because I notice that if I, if I go blank on like a Sunday because I'm not doing anything interesting, then I hit it on a Monday, then you're like, all right, I've got a boost of like nearly of my followership. I've probably got about 25% of the followers that are doing it are probably all looking at my stuff. And you're like, oh, that, this person, because they push it a little bit. Um, whereas the least active 25% brands only hit about six stories per month, so one a week. So that's probably a little bit too much. Um, but what I thought was interesting was the frames per day. And this does annoy me as well. This frustrates the hell out of me. And it obviously, according to the data, frustrates the fuck out of a lot of other people as well. In terms of a median amount of frames and how many stories they should be posting on any given day. You and mean the little dots at the top? The you don't want to turn dots. into little dots. Yeah. Mate, yeah. like, I mean, Mike, I love you, mate. I swipe straight away. I, I see so many, how many there are. I'm like, I've got no time for this at all. I was like, realize. And it said like about 30% of activity comprises days with only one frame. One to three frames is about 60% of brand activity. Almost 20% of stories have about seven more frames. So the median amount was one to three frames for 60% of your brand activity should be happening. And then the retention rate of this. So over, um, so they used a, an example of one to five frames, basically on your stories going from, say if you had 100 viewers and then by the fifth story on average, you would have fallen to about 68. So you go from hundred to 68, you've lost just over 30% or based off five stories or five little blimps. That's, give or take um well, yeah the way that i got um the way that i got told about mm. that was uh, again it's little things like instagram 
t are telling you what they want you to use, right? Everyone knows that kind of like they're pushing reels, right? So they want you to use reels. There's a reason why on Instagram, when you hold the story button down, it stops after four stories. They don't want you talking longer than that. Correct. They don't want you going longer than a minute. You speak to that. So now I, what I try and do now is I try and get, if I'm going to post something, I try and get it in four stories. And then the next thing I post has to be a slightly different way. Then I, I can talk about the same topic, but then in words. And it might be like uh, something that someone can mm. read and quickly, easy to read. Or it could be photos. It could be something different. Then I might get back to doing four in a row again. Like it's something I'm getting better at um, is that the social media apps tell you what they want. They tell you. They push yeah. things that they want you to start using more and more. So I think that's the that's the one thing that I I learned. I can't remember who told me about that now. It was some Instagram someone who knew what they're doing about Instagram videos and stuff. But yeah, I'm the <laughs> same as you. If I see if I see sick, like dots rather than lines, I'm like, see you there. I don't care who it is. Um, it could be someone I really <laughs> like. See you there. Don't care. Don't matter. You got too much stuff going on today. Uh, yeah. It's not worth my time. <laughs> it's not what you're there yeah. for. You're not there for that. You're there for short, snappy stuff. And uh, that's yeah, what exactly. people remember. I think people have got to remember, it seemed like the what you're aiming for, if people are jotting this down, is about seven. I'd, I'd say three to seven per day, it seems to be. That is like the happy biting point. And I think, I think that's also, I think the thing I have to remember, that's for brands though. I think if, if you're more of a person and you're more of a personality, I think you can get away with more. But even then I would look at, I've, I think, think, so, I think so, the same person said 24 if you're a personal brand, 24 is like, they said something like six snippets of your day. So six lots of four, six snippets yeah. of your day, some text, some photos, some clients, some behind the scenes. And they're like, you're so going to get enough it, in there, like breakfast, midday, lunch, midday, dinner. So, the so the number of individual photos or frames per day, it decreases basically going from one to 11. And then you go to a 12 plus, it jumps up back to the same retention rate you had at five. So the same, basically, if you get to five, you might as well go all the way to 12. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't say I, I suspect, I suspect that's because those brands maybe are more personality based, those Correct. sorts of numbers, yeah. maybe for, for that, that, that data. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. really interesting. So, I mean, I could post a link up on, on I, 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 we say to talk, the, but... we say to those people in that mentoring group, well, we say that you should use it, social media for yourself as you use it as a consumer. Correct. Think about what pisses you off. What pisses you off? Long, boring videos. So guess what? Don't post long, boring <laughs> don't videos. Make them. What pisses you off? <laughs> stories that go on forever. So don't post stories that go on forever. Um, yeah, I just think it's it's fascinating that when you you take a step back and think about it, is yeah, how, what do you like about Instagram? Stuff that's funny, stuff that's shareable, stuff for people who don't take themselves too seriously. Post more of that shit then. Like, don't think you have to be perfect all the time. Um, I mean, yeah. just for that, I had to open up my Microsoft Teams so that people would be like, oh, if somebody's on there, they're like, oh, Tom's online. I'm not online. Don't talk Tom's to me. I'm not working. <laughs> I'm not working. Go away. Tom's I still replied. I actually haven't been working PTC today, so that's not here. I've still got messages unread. I'm like, no. <laughs> They'll be like, he's been online. Uh, yeah. yeah, go away. <laughs> Not cool. All right. Um, yeah, moving on. I did a put a, um, a thing up yesterday about programming. It was a little dig at Group X programming. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's a shock. You uh, it's a shock. Um, yeah, because my workouts have been basically that half an hour time cap. Do, is it, do I do five things? Four things? I don't know. Squat, pull, summit, corey, some bicep curls, and what else did I do? Pushes. Yeah. And it took me like, I, I had about five six messages from trainers going hashtag tom's ward um doing this sort of like and then <laughs> then we're like oh that looks like group x i was like yeah you actually program your clients like that really and i'm like it's a joke it literally took me less than five seconds to make and i literally see group x training like that which is unfortunate i still think group x training it should just be kind of modified like single person training really i don't really get i still don't get it um and it, it just it went on me up slightly and I was like, I've kind of, I, I put it out there just to kind of get a hook and yeah, yeah. it literally reaffirmed people saying that reaffirmed what I thought. Um, and they were like, Oh, that looks like a wad. And I was like, yep. <laughs> yes, it does. I was like, oh, all right. Um, yeah. So it's, the whole it's, concept it's, is stupid, isn't it? Workout of the day nah, for who? Like for, everyone, for yeah, everyone's yeah, exactly. doing the same workout of the day. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a plan. Scale it. You've got males on this weight and females on this weight. 
what? All males do it that way, do they? I know females that <laughs> are <right>. males. <laughs> yeah, hands down, easily. Um, yeah, Jesus. So it's just quite interesting. Don't really understand. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we've got uh, just on the ranty scale. Um, I guess we've just got because uh, it's been a week of looking at my Instagram and kind of it's I haven't been able to take my eyes off her, but I also hate her. I hate her. Hater of passion. She's getting ridiculed right now as well, a little bit, which is good. But it's also like you can't really feed this person because, yeah, of the obvious. <laughs> she thing. feeds herself uh, far too much. <laughs> um, it's 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 the old uh, fat doctor UK. Um, she j- just literally infuriates me. It's it's not based off. Yeah, I t- yes, we have different differing opinions, but it's 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 the case of just any opinion that isn't being given to her by i don't know somebody who is a overweight female of an ethnic minority who probably were who is a gp and has a medical degree that's probably the only person she's going to take valid advice from and somebody who agrees with her shock um every single time somebody posts and says oh what about this or what about this and it's like it's literally a straight attack on something that's not even weight related at all like you said, she attacked Jane Smith for just being a personal trainer. What a great way to follow the audience. Guess what? There's a hell of a lot of fitness people on Instagram. You're going to get bombarded. Um, and then literally one guy was say, oh, isn't it really about calories? That kind of thing. And she was like, you could be more moronic. Obviously, you're a white, thin male that have just put this up. And don't you think somebody who and literally she said, like, I've got kids. I have a medical degree, a good job, a house. And I look after all this stuff. You don't think I can look after my diet? Me and Dan have seen it. We literally we have clients that 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 is the case. They they cannot look after their diet, and they have all those things. Um, doesn't matter who you are, doctor. Guess what? <laughs> I train CEOs of who own probably ten companies. Um, they have a lot more stress, I would say, than what a GP would do. Um, yeah, it's and they can't control it's the diet. A, <laughs> it's just a fright. It's just a frightening like position to be taken for someone in that in that in that. A position of power dare i say like it's um like i said to you though before we came on it's one of those things where the the more that they the more opposition they come up against the more they dig their heels in and they think they're oh, right interesting. it's a bit like the a bit like the joel seedman thing literally we've been talking um by <laughs> lane norton has literally gone at her with a post and screen yeah. grabbed her face on it um, quite right yeah. uh, and, and it's one of those where you can't have it both ways so she's there attacking someone like james smith but then she doesn't like being attacked herself and it's like hang on a minute like you can't you can't have it both ways and it's like i said to you it's, it's she she'll take the ground of oh, i'm being she posts about james smith calls him just a personal trainer or whatever and then she then takes that oh i'm being oh i'm being hounded i'm being you know bullied it's like well no that's just what you've done like um and it, like I said, they dig their heels in these people when when they know. I think deep down that they they don't know, they don't know they're wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like they actually believe it. That's why they dig the deals in. So it's like Joel Seaman thing. It's like the more you attack him, the more he believes that he's right and that you're wrong because you're attacking him. So therefore, it just it enhances his position of like, well, I must be right because more people are attacking me. More people are having to go at me, so I must be getting. I must be annoying them. So because they don't believe it. So because I'm threatening them, and it's like no, you're just an idiot. So Lay Norton obviously just made a post and she's obviously saying you sh- you sh- it's body positivity, you should be finding your own body. And literally on one of the comments, she called his muscular body gross. Yeah, I mean, exa- exactly. Exa- exactly like, that. Right, okay. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he was fat, um, that would be that she'd be like, well done on you. Well done you. Um, but no, he's like, no, I want to look this way. So crack on. You can't just call the muscular body gross because you don't like it. Like, when, if you're preaching body positivity, it's really strange. It's just, yeah, I don't really get it. Don't really get it, mate. And yeah, she's so she's 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 a, she's a follow which I'm going to persist with, um, but she's an infuriating follow. And uh, yeah, I would urge people to do it because it's a lot of content that you can come up with. Um, because she's, yeah. Just a lot of a lot of content, and you can't you don't try and argue with with this person, um, honestly, because there's Pointless. actually no point. It's no point. It's a, it's like trying to a flat earther that kind of person. Um, she's she's lost. She's lost to those yeah all that kind of. She she believes in COVID, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm quite surprised by that. But yeah, doesn't believe that that 
obesity is a uh, a risk factor for COVID. So. Mm. Interesting. Um, crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, interesting. Um, but yeah, infuriating follow. Um, have you followed it now? Or you, you probably you've had a little bit. No, more I don't, mate. I, I I keep my Instagram feed very much uh, filtered for my own. Yeah, sanity. I mean, I norm I normally do. And then when we were talking about her last week, and we watched the thing on this morning, and I was like, I'll give her a follow I, I, just to give it a week. So part of that, like, so. Oh. I get research. asked about this actually. It's good research. I do, yeah, I do get asked about this a little bit. Like, I do still follow like Jim Shark, Jim Shark training stuff because it's some of it's just hilarious. It provides content, but for that, for example, I wouldn't follow her because looking at her stuff would only annoy me. It wouldn't actually serve the people that I work with. Like, I don't yeah. work with that type of person. Maybe um, I could do it just for a laugh, I suppose. Mean. But again, I, that would just be the reason I'd be posting that content just for me to have a laugh and me to have a giggle. It doesn't really help people. Um, me point. talking about that it's, sort of stuff isn't useful. It's not. It's, it's not. It's not my demographic either. So I'm gonna give it a cheeky but, but, unfollow. But it's not even that. I think for you, it's 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 different because you with online stuff, it's you're not doing your online stuff to necessarily get clients necessarily. It's more about just you do what you want to do. Um, and it's useful to know popular culture and understand what's going on and, and all that sort of stuff. But for me the reason I follow someone like Jim shark train is because I know that my clients are people who, or my type of client, people who would watch that and go, oh, that's a good, that's a good workout. Or that's a good something to do. I'm like, no, it's not. So I highlight more <laughs> the, the gym shark bullshit and the men's health bullshit because my clientele would focus on that sort of thing. So I follow men's health still. I follow that because I do want to see when they post that chili powder burns fat and whatever that's B- right. bullshit that's- stuff they've said before. Um, that's- and that's the, that's why I follow them. Whereas that woman, if it would be more if I was someone like um, Amelia Thompson, I follow her for content. I'd be like Correct. someone who's, who's yeah. a bit more in that way of of, of thinking things. Because if I if I start talking about that and then tracking macros, it's a bit like it doesn't work, doesn't make any mm. sense. Because, but I think someone like, for example, Amelia would talk about her and say why she maybe thinks it's dangerous for people to go that too far that way because actually it is unhealthy and you do have a poor relationship with food and maybe and all this sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's about understanding your audience a little bit and who to follow. And it's why I don't really follow like Lane Norton really or anything like that, because I know he knows what he's doing. I don't like need to really see anything that he does as, much, as bad as it sounds. I don't, um, I would just find myself comparing myself to what he says, or I'd, I'd find myself wanting to, to maybe not copy his content, but I say something similar. And I feel bad if I did. And it's like, you shouldn't feel bad, no. but I just keep my, my following very, very small. Um, because I don't need to see stuff basically when I go on there because <laughs> I'd, I'd get infuriated. Like I'd see, I'd see Lane Norton going in like that and I'd get annoyed. I'd be like, she's a fucking hypocrite. Who's this woman? I would spend half an hour getting lost in that. And yeah, I don't yeah, need exactly. to, I just don't need to get lost in it. Um, so it's that kind of thing for me is that I, I would get lost in that sort of stuff. If I, I'd read the comments and I'd be having a laugh and you, before you know it, you've lost half an hour of your day and you're like, shit, I should be doing work. <laughs> so I'm trying to stay away. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So I think that's a little brief overview. Yeah. Some Instagram y kind of social media content for the trainers listening today. Um, lovely. All right. Um, we'll bring you to wrap it to a close. I think we're, we're bordering on 50 minutes, mate. Classic. Um, oh, we can track, can't we? <laughs> um, any other news? No, not from me. Um, oh, Blitz closes on Thursday. We've still got Blitz places available, and it'll be the last one till like May or June or something like that. Because it's fair enough time consuming so if you want to get involved in that let me know uh you can get a place on that but if you're listening to this by now and you're not joined you're probably not going to so don't worry about it yeah <laughs> uh lovely um obviously if you're a trainer we have more listeners than yeah obviously we want people to go and join the collective ptc wise um this weekend we have on saturday we have a v muscle mentors um i believe it's a nice one they're doing two hours two hours me me and dan could go for two hours but it won't be useful content um nope. so <laughs> we just talk about the fat doctor all over again <laughs> i mean luke has not come to us and gone tom dan do you want to do a bit for the collective no nope, we're not allowed to do it together um yeah uh-huh. so it go too long but yeah, the Muscle Mentors are doing a thing this Saturday, the whatever date that is. So two hour seminar, workshop, lecture, interactive thing. They have their like course that they do. So they're bringing two hours worth of that. They're doing four, four different topics. Um, and if anybody doesn't know the Muscle Mentors in, they know what they're doing. Um, it's pretty nerdy. So if you want to go through some, some of that, yeah, you can go do it. Yeah, have a little Google and sign up. 
I'm part Basically. of their um, I'm part of their like online portal thing. It's very, very good. Nice. It's good. Yeah. So basically you can get a little snippet of what they do for five quid. And you get all the other stuff, basically. All right. Um to sign up. So go do that if you haven't already. Jesus. Um yeah, lovely. Apart from that, no business. Everybody on the PT scheme. Um, I'll see you Monday morning. Monday morning, Monday evening. Unfortunate. They're unlucky, aren't they? Like you've got your mentorship. They have, yeah, they have to see you every week, and then uh, yeah. these lucky people have to see me and talk Poor to bastards. me for an hour. Poor guys. Have yeah. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening, and we will catch you next week. See you later.